Brethren, if you're a basketball fan, you have probably seen the NCAA game between St. Benil and Jose Rizal University on November 8, 2022. It made headlines uh, in sports, not because the game is very popular or the game was very exciting. It, was, it made headlines because of the ugly fight that happened during that game. A player of the JRU, or the Jose Rizal University, went on a punching spree. Trying to punch anyone in white uniform. So the white uniform or the St. Benil. If you have seen the video, it was just a mess. It's really, um, it wasn't pleasant. That, that player has punched a lot of players. And moments after the bro, that player was seen in a video where he was crying hard. Probably he realized the repercussion, repercussions of his actions. Later, brethren, that player was indefinitely suspended by the NCAA. Not only that, but he's going to face sanctions from his school. And most likely, likely he would lose his scholarship. He will also face civil and criminal charges because of what had happened. What's worse, brethren, is that this player is actually a good candidate for the PBA. And because of that conduct, his, um, his future as a PBA player has not been bright as it should be anymore because of what had happened. Now, you can see what happened, brethren, when you let anger control your life. In this example, we can see how a moment of anger can lead to a lifetime of regret. Anger is something we don't just see in basketball. And I can assure you, brethren, this, would, this is not the first and it will not be the last time that we will see fighting in sports. And probably you have seen it. I, I, in my personal life, I have seen um, uh, games that turn into fights. I have personally watched this game, how people punch each other because of uh, being hot-headed and losing their temper. Um, anger is not just an issue inside the court. It is also an issue outside. You probably have seen videos or um, news about road rage where people just simply hurt other people and sometimes they got killed because of this road rage. And perhaps you are thinking that at least I'm not that kind of person who's very angry. Sometimes I get angry just a little bit and this is not really a problem to me. I don't actually punch anyone or kill anyone because of, of anger. Now you might probably think that this message is not for you, brethren. But anger doesn't have to be just about punching and stabbing other people to death. Anger is more common than you think. Here's an interesting survey, brethren. Just this year, Gallup, a global analytic firm, found out that the Philippines is the second angriest country in Southeast Asia. See that, brethren? We are, we are actually the second angriest country in Southeast Asia. The same study concluded that in year 2020, the world is angrier and more stressed out than in the past 15 years. So they say that the number one contributory factor to that is the pandemic, which made a lot of people stressed out. So naturally, that's how they respond, to be angry. That's why, brethren, I would say that being angry is something that is a very common emotion that all of us experience. Probably, it is very difficult for us to go through a day without getting angry. Probably, if not a day, not going through a week without getting angry. And I think this is something that all of you could relate to, especially those who have children. <laughs> and this is very, very common to parents. They get angry to their children, to their spouse. And not just for, our, for the parents, also for those who are in work. You might get angry to, against your workmate. Or those drivers, you get angry when somebody cuts you off in, in traffic. So angry or anger is a very huge uh, problem to not just um, the people outside the church, but also within. So I believe this is a very important topic for us to discuss. Today, brethren, I want to answer three questions for us to better understand what the Bible says about anger. And with these three questions, we're going to also have three answers. So the questions that I would like to answer is this. 
is are this. Is anger wrong? That's number one. Number two is what's wrong with anger? And number three, of course, is very important, how to manage anger. So let's go to the first question, brethren. Is anger wrong? Well, brethren, the answer is no. Anger is not always wrong. It could be wrong, but it is not always wrong. We could read in the Bible that Yahweh, the Most High God, became angry multiple times. And we could also read how Yahshua, the Son of God, also got angry. We read in Ephesians 4 verse 26, brethren. Let's go to Ephesians 4 verse 26. We read there, Be angry. You see that, brethren? Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. So we can see here, brethren, that anger itself is not automatically a sin. There's a time when it is okay to be angry, but it shouldn't lead to sin. Right? So that's the answer to our first question. Is anger wrong? Anger is not always wrong. Let's go to the second question, brethren. What's wrong with anger? Let's go to, to James 1, verse 19 to 20. James 1, verse 19 to 20. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So that's the answer. What's wrong with anger? You see, brethren, naturally our wrath, our anger, have the tendency to break the law of Yahweh. That's the tendency of our anger. Uncontrolled anger can lead to health, hate, hateful words and actions. Anger can blind us and make us lose control of ourselves. In the heat of the moment, we feel we are justified. We feel the right to insult other people, to be rude, and to even hurt other people. I would say, brethren, while that player, the NCAA player, uh, went to a punching spree, I would say that in his mind, he is justified in his mind that he has the right to be angry and to punch anyone he wants to punch. That's the reason, brethren, that we need to control our anger. And because of that, brethren, because of anger, we thought that we are in the right place to say hurtful things, to, to hurt other people. And that is something that is really bad about not being able to control your anger. Many people think, you see, brethren, many people think that they are strong when they are able to release their anger. They would say, ah, oh, that person is always angry. That person is very strong. He could, he could easily, um, he could easily vent out. He could easy, that's, that's, a strong, that's a strong person because he could easily express himself. When he's angry, his anger is mad. He's going to lash out. And some people think that's, that's strength. That is something that is power. That is something to be admired of. And yet, brethren, if you are going to look into the Bible, the Bible actually tells us that those people who cannot control themselves are actually weak. And those, the true sign of strength is, is when you have the ability to control your emotion. And that includes anger. You don't have to go here, brethren, but let me just quote Proverbs 25, verse 28. You just write it in your notes. Proverbs 25, verse 28. It tells us, Whoever has no rule over his own spirit, just like a person who went to, who went on a punching spree, who is very angry. He says, whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. And in Proverbs 16, verse 32, brethren, Proverbs 16, verse 32, I want you to remember this. It says, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Did you see that, brethren? He who is slower to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. See that, brethren? You think that a person who has big muscles, who is very strong, very, someone who is like that is mighty? Yet, brethren, the Bible tells us that if you are slow to anger, if you are not, if you don't, you are not easily given into your wrath, your anger, you are actually a strong person. So, that is the answer to our question. The second question, what's wrong with anger? 
Now finally, brethren, let's answer the question. The most important question here is how to manage anger. How do you manage anger, brethren? For us to answer this one, brethren, let's go back to James 1 verse 19. Now, there's a lot of Bible verses that could answer this question. But I just want to focus on James 1 verse 19. It tells us, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. So there are three things here, brethren, that could help us to manage anger. Number one is swift to hear, slow to, aim, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Let's go, let's go and discuss each one, brethren. So manage, to manage anger, brethren, we must be swift to hear. Swift to hear. Swift to hear who? Who are we going to hear? Well, well first of all, brethren, we, are need, we need to hear God's instructions. That is something that we need to first establish in our lives. You see, brethren, this tells us for us to hear God, we need to read His Word, the Scripture, the Bible. And when we are filled with God's Word, brethren, we can easily be angered, offended, and frustrated. You see, brethren, that's the power of God's words. You see, brethren, this is the, one of the reasons why we should make it a habit to read the Word of God. Because if we are able to fill our minds with His Word, then we are not easily angry. And I can tell you, brethren, that is one that is tested and proven. When you are filled with God's words, then it would be difficult for you to easily get angry. Next, brethren, is who are we going to hear, brethren? We are going to hear God. And next is, we are going to be swift in hearing other people. Sometimes, brethren, all we need is to know the other side of the story. Diba? Sometimes you get angry immediately without knowing the whole story. And because of that, brethren, we lose our temper. Because we don't see from the perspective of the other person. I remember a story, and this father who has two, ch two children, who, they were riding the bus. And the children are very noisy, they, were, they are out of control, and the other passenger got really angry and annoyed because of his children. And once he, uh, he cannot control himself anymore, he went, to the, he went to, the, to the father. And he asked, so this guy, this, uh, this other passenger is already angry. And he was, asked, he was telling his father, can't you discipline your children? Can't you let them, uh, let them settle down and not be noisy? And the father said, I am sorry. We just lost their mother. And I don't know how to tell them the truth. So by that time, the, the anger of that person was pacified. So you see, brethren, when you are swift to, swift to hear, if you are able to see the perspective of other people, you are able to Suit down your anger. You are able to control it because you know that there's another side of the story. But if you are quick into feeling angry, and you don't want to hear other people, then that's the time when you can easily get angry at other people. That's the reason, brethren, I would say that God gave us two ears and one mouth. Because God wants us to hear twice more than we talk. And you see, brethren, isn't it? Isn't it interesting to know that you cannot close your ears, but you can close your mouth? It tells us, brethren, that we should hear more than speaking. And because of that, brethren, if you are going to be, to be swift to hear, then you would have an easier way of managing your anger. And next is, brethren, is when we become swift to hear, then the natural effect or the natural uh, result of that is we are going to become slow to speak. You cannot hear, you cannot listen and talk at the same time. It is either you don't, you don't listen or you just want to, to just talk. When we are angry brethren, it takes more strength to stay calm and be silent. It is true that it is more difficult to listen rather than to talk. Yet that's exactly what we should do during arguments. You need to listen twice as much as you speak. And because of that, brethren, what this means is that what this means is that we should be our natural disposition should be 
patient, loving, and merciful. That's why, brethren, that is the third way for us to manage anger. The writer James here said that we should be slow to wrath. That is what it means, brethren. We should not, our default thinking should be not anger and wrath. Our response should lead towards love, mercy, and patience. When there's something that will naturally make you angry, brethren, you choose to be understanding instead of seeking revenge or getting even. You choose to be merciful and forgiving rather than to be filled with bitterness and hate. That's what it means to be slow to wrath. Brethren, with that said, I hope you are able to learn more about what the Bible says about anger. This practical teaching, brethren, is something that you could actually apply right now. When you learn to control and manage your anger, brethren, you will save yourself from a lot of headache, pain, and problems. And you see, brethren, I am sure that all of us will come to a time when we become angry. And when that, when that time comes, brethren, I hope that you will remember this message.